And then Allah repeated, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ Fear Allah again. الَّذِي تَسَأَلُونَ بِهِ Fear Allah through whom you ask and demand and seek your mutual rights. You know when you say, by Allah, give me my right. By Allah, give me my right. So fear Allah by whom and through whom you ask each other your mutual rights. وَالْأَرْحَامَ This is connected to وَالْتَقُوا وَالْتَقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَأَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامَ And fear, and fear your, fear arham, your relatives and the kinship bond that you have. Fear breaking and violating the rights which people demand from one another and fear the from fear violating and breaking and neglecting the rights of your arham, your relatives, your family members, your spouses. In Allah can alikum raqiba. Surat Al Imran, Ya Yuhaladina Amanu Takullaha Hakka Tukati. That's the second verse. O oh, you who believe O oh, who you believe. The first time was O oh, people, O oh, mankind. O oh, you who believe, fear Allah as He is ought to be feared. Ya Yuhaladina Amanu Takullaha Hakka Tukati. وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Do not die except in the state of Iman, Islam, faith and obedience. Do not die, do not let death come to you except you are in a state of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other verse, Surah Al-Ahzab. يَا يَهُوَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ Again, O people, O Muslims, O believers, O you who believe, fear Allah. وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا And say that which is correct. Preserve your tongue, preserve your mouth. Preserve your tongue and, and make sure you fear Allah in regards to what comes out from here. وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا يُسْلِحْ لَكُمْ عَمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَمَنْ يُطْعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا This is the end of the verse. These are the three verses. Now imagine. We need to think. You know, we, we should learn read Arabic and understand Arabic. We say so many phrases and we hear so many things, we don't have a clue. The Imam is reading Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen and reciting verses of the Quran and 99% of the people behind don't have a clue what's going on. And in Tarawih Salah, the brothers thinking about Liverpool versus Manchester United or about the credit crunch. Or if you live in the city, then you're thinking about what? What's happening, you know. Anyway, um, understand these verses. Why did the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam choose to um, recite these three verses. What's common? What's common in these three verses? Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taqwa. Taqwa. Why? Why the time of marriage? Because in order for marriage to be beautiful, beauty of marriage in Islam, marriage in Islam can only be beautiful, can only be beautiful. Remember this clearly and carefully. Marriage in Islam can only be beautiful if both spouses, the man and the woman, the brother and the sister, the husband and the wife, both of them have taqwa, the fear of Allah, prior to marriage, qabla nikah, inda nikah, wa ba'da nikah. Prior to marriage, at the time of marriage, and after marriage. If there's no taqwa, there's no fear of Allah, there's no thought of, of um, accountability before Allah, Subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no way this marriage will be beautiful. There is no way this marriage will be prosperous. There is no possibility of this marriage prospering. This marriage will turn out to be ugly. Rather than being beautiful, it will become ugly. Seriously, and that's why we have all these breakdowns of marriages. Because we don't have taqwa and fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it all goes back to taqwa. Before marriage, start off on the right foot. Start off, Sheikh was talking about dating. Don't date. And it doesn't, I mean, dating doesn't really do anything anyway. As he was saying, more, we, you know, there's so many people who I've spoken to as well, you know, with problems and this and that. It was a love marriage, by the way, but anyway, what's, where's all the love gone now? Most, most of the people, they, you start off with love marriage and dating and end up. So, and and then, then we, we blame arranged marriages, that arranged marriages, you know, you, you don't know one another and you end up divorced. There's, I tell you something, seriously, more people in dating and love marriages end up in divorce than arranged marriages. You know why? Because in arranged marriages, you've had your parents, you've had hundreds, well not hundreds, but you've got a lot of people in your family investigating, researching, finding out the true nature, reality, and everything of that individual. Whereas dating, yo, yo, you think you're in love. But it's all lust anyway, as you know. And you're clouded. And the other person, it's all artificial behavior. They're just trying to impress you. 
You know when you're dating, you just see one another when, when? Once a week? Twice a week? When you come once a week, the brother will come to collect the sister, you know, he'll be properly dressed up and she'll apply all the fragrance and perfume she can and she'll try to look her best. You go to a restaurant and the brother will come, sister, sit down, sit down, you know. She'll open the door of the car and I'll take your coat off. It's raining. Here, wear my coat. Okay. <laughs> That's what they do. And then what happens? That's dating. But when the going gets tough, you get married, you start living together, the going gets tough, responsibilities, you have to pay the electricity bill and the gas bill and council tax and you have to pay this and then you have to get nappies and change the nappies and you have to do, you have to go shopping and you know, li you know, you have to work at your marriage. Marriage, it's beautiful but it's not easy. You have to work at it. Seriously, brothers and sisters, you have to work at it. Now the true nature and reality, that, that was just all artificial external behavior. That all goes out of the window. The true reality, the true nature, the true colors of the person comes up and rises up when the going gets tough. A human being is hidden under his tongue. Very nice, very gentle, very sweet, you know, very polite. But when it gets difficult, when you travel with someone, like Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattar radiallahu anhu, somebody came and praised another individual. He said, have you traveled with him? He said, no. Have you made a transaction with him? He said, no. Have you lived with him? He said, no. He said, how can you praise him? So, um, this, uh, before marriage, at the time of marriage, make marriages. So I said, taqwa before marriage. At the same time, taqwa before marriage, at the time of marriage, make sure your marriages are conducted in accordance with the Quran and Sunnah, in accordance with the with the teachings of Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Make it simple, seriously, make it simple. Abdul Rahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu got married, he never even informed the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He saw him, he said, oh Abdul Rahman, he saw him after a few days, he had a yellow stain and mark here. So what's this mark here? He said, there was some perfume that I applied last week, I got married. Oh, you got married last week? SubhanAllah, he said, okay, barakallahu lak, wa baraka alayk, wa jama'a baynakuma fi khair awlim wa bishatin. Allah bless you, bless both of you, bless your marriage, just make a walima even if it's a goat. He never said like an imam today, maybe someone like me. He didn't even tell me, you know, you should have invited me, the imam of your local. You, you, you got married without telling me, astaghfirullah. That's what we do. Look at the messenger of sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No complaint. That's the sahaba radiallahu anhum. They just got married. Morning they got married. Was, you know, so what? It's just, it's a, it's something, it's, you don't make a big deal out of it. I'm not saying you don't call people, but you know, making big, big um, self-imposed restrictions that until my great granddad does not come back from that village in Pakistan or India, marriage will not take place. Seriously, that's what happens nowadays. So make it simple. Islam has made marriage so simple. We have, we have made it difficult upon ourselves by, by placing self-imposed restrictions that have nothing whatsoever to do with Islam. And most of it, most of it is cultural based. Seriously, most of it is cultural based, nothing to do with Islam. Take, off, take out all these restrictions. Make it simple. Marriage is a simple thing. And just get married. And, and remove all these restrictions that we have replaced, uh, placed upon ourselves. Until such and such person doesn't come. Until you don't get this. Until you don't get that. These are just uh, restrictions that we have made difficult. And when we make marriage difficult, we have made marriages difficult. Yeah? When, when the doors of halal are closed automatically, the doors of haram open. That's what's happening. And the parents, we don't have parents here, and there may be some, but they have to take a share of the blame here. Seriously, some parents are so unreasonable in their approach with their children. It's just some of them like insisting until you do not get married to my brother's daughter or my sister's son or someone back home from the same village, from the same city, maybe in the same you know, street next door. You have to get married to. There's no, there's no such a thing in Islam. You have to be from the same caste or ethnicity or background. Yes, compatibility, suitability, kafa'a. But that doesn't mean you have to be. It's better sometimes. Yes, if you're from the same background, you know, you might want to eat the same type of food. Alhamdulillah, if you're a food person, yeah, okay. But it's not necessary. So parents need to make it easy. When we make it difficult for people to marry, when the doors of halal are closed, the doors of haram open. Fornication becomes rife, like right now, fornication.